great steelworks at Shotton in Cheshire stands like a symbol of the rugged days of the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century. Today, it's one of the biggest in Britain. But just over a hundred years ago, it began as a small business with one machine making irons for clocks. Today, it turns out every month enough steel to put a steel fence six feet high in place of the whole length of Europe's mythical iron curtain. man is recording the temperature. It'll be at least 1600 degrees centigrade. And here's a furnace man throwing in the manganese that gives to steel that little something extra, like pepper in a stew. Steel, to give strength to anything, from an aircraft carrier to a razor blade. And here in his laboratory, is a chemist who is about to start another revolution. That is, the bonding of plastic with steel, an entirely new process. For years, the problem of joining steel and plastic baffled the experts. But at last, they've done it. And it's turned out to be the most successful marriage between unlikely partners since the wedding of bacon and eggs. The plastic sheet is made in a factory near Colchester in Essex, for in the early stages, the two components are quite distinct and separate. First of all, the plastic is a white powder, but right at the start, color is added. Any amateur home decorator will appreciate the point that a gay color put on like this won't need a new coat next year. And here it comes, in great lumps of gorgeous red, looking rather like dough. As a matter of fact, the system of production at this stage was modelled on a bakery. Hot red rolls, suitable for breakfast at the Kremlin. After the big rollers, the plastic runs into a thing called a calendar, which is the machine that presses the plastic into a continuous sheet of whatever thickness is required. Then it runs through the trimming gear, which cuts it into suitable lengths. And when it's wound up and weighed, it's ready for use. You can have one more refinement if you want it. This is the machine with which designs are embossed onto a plain surface. But don't ask how they make those check patterns. That's done by the same kind of magic that puts the tartan onto a Scotsman's kilt. Now, back to the steelworks where the molten metal is getting near the strip stage. And this is the hot strip mill with the original ingot thinned out. Now it's ready for the next process, which will send it bouncing along at 15 miles an hour, cooling off. rolls of colored plastic are beginning to move. Plastic and steel are almost ready to be wedded together. The actual bonding process is highly secret. Fewer than 50 people know how it's done, and we are the first people outside the business ever to see it. So if you think you can spot the trick of it, for goodness sake, don't tell anyone. This is the actual roll of plastic we saw earlier. And now, for the first time, this is that wedded partnership, the steel and plastic bonded together. It means that you have the gay colouring and the glamour of plastic and the strength of steel combined. 
for use in the household and outside it, from kitchen furniture to ship's fittings. And now we look in at yet another factory, at Newport in Monmouthshire, where a strip of this combination of steel and plastic is shaped into an article for everyday use. The question is, what? It's a water heater. That's the size. Now the top and bottom. And there you are. It's got all sorts of uses. The walls and tables of the steelworks canteen are made of it. and the inside walls of this lift. Bright tables and chairs add colour to this gay London scene. They're made of it too. But the ordinary home kitchen gets the best out of this new discovery. With its help, the housewife can even match her kitchen table to her curtains. In fact, there's almost nothing that can't be made of it, even the legendary kitchen sink. And even the clock. Mile after mile, it comes rolling off the machines, a new British material that will revolutionise a thousand and one industries. A steady stream of strips and finished articles for sale at home and abroad. Baths for Bombay, kettles for Klondike, tables for Timbuktu. From the factory to the docks. to the world a new and vital product to capture the markets without which we cannot live. 